people would come in with certain types of butts. Mm -hmm. And it would tell me a little bit about the personality. I started finding a pattern. So I can honestly tell you, looked at, looking at somebody's butt and shape, and how they're taking care of themselves. What, what, what is their health and lifestyle about? From the rest of my life when I'm walking around <laughs> on the street, I will always now, think really of you. So the most common type of butt is the beanbag butt. You know, it's shaped like a beanbag. She laid on top of his body while he was dying and wouldn't let anybody come near them. What kind of butt do you have and what does it say about you as a person? Today, Jenny Lee, the sexy nutritionist, has the answer to those questions and more. And later, actress Catherine Black from the new movie, The Donner Party. Great to have you here today, Thank Jenny. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you here, but I'm a little bit scared to find out after the holidays <laughs> though, what kind of butt I have at the moment. I'm so sure your butt looks just let's fine. Let's keep it very generic and <laughs> okay. every, we'll talk about the, the, the rest of the world. But uh, The rest of the world, <laughs> as long as it doesn't concern us. So what is buttology? Well, biology, you know, I came up with the concept, I'm a fitness trainer and nutrition counselor. So I've realized during my work, my line of work, that people would come in with certain types of butts. Mm -hmm. And it would tell me a little bit about the personality. I started finding a pattern in their behavior when they would come and work out. So it made me look into it a bit, a bit more. So I can honestly tell you, looked at, looking at somebody's butt and shape, and how they're taking care of themselves. What, what, what is their health and lifestyle about? which has a lot to do with the personality traits. So that's what I'm here today to tell you, explain to you a little and bit you about And you know that. now, you're having a major effect on me because like for now, from the rest of my life, when I'm walking around <laughs> on the street, I will always now think really of you. Now I'm really self-conscious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, and everyone else too though. I'll be like Absolutely. a categorizing, you know. You know what, so. and I do that very naturally now. Like, oh, you know, they might not, okay, they need a little bit more in the gym. They're a little shy. Mm -hmm. They tend to be a little bit more aggressive. So I can tell a little bit about a person. I can read them. It's, it's like, you know, fortune telling in your hand, but <laughs> fortune telling. So what's the most common type of butt? Is that a good say, place to start? What's the most that, common? You know, that's a great, great, uh, on a, in a, in the, it depends on the country, believe it or not. Hmm. I would say in the United States, the most common type of butt is what I call the beanbag butt. Hmm. That sounds like what I said off camera earlier, but I won't say now. Because uh, I'm <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The fat. Yes, you know, and, and unfortunately, okay. the United States is known to, ha to have the most overweight and obese mm. people um, across the world. So in the United States itself, I would say that is the most common type of butt is the beanbag butt, which I can show you if you want to yes. have photos that yes. I would be happy. Well, look at it. It's the first one oh, on my the, Oh, see, I <laughs> guess well. <laughs> but this is what a beanbag And it's weird. It does look, look like me. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> TMI, honey. <laughs> I didn't no, see the no. camera. How did you... <laughs> You know, that's a great bathing suit on you. <laughs> um, but basically, this is what a beanbag butt, bean bag butt is. Say that three times. And it's, you know, it's, it's shaped like a beanbag. Like a beanbag is lumpy. It's, it's, it's all over oh. the place, you know. And it is. It's an overweight. It's like cellulite? Is that what you know, lumpy is? Not necessarily. Is? It's just that the fat fits in different areas. It's not as smooth. Mm. You know, a butt, you have to understand the butt. The butt is mainly, it composes of three muscles, mm. okay? And to get the right shape of a, of a butt, you have to be able to work all three different muscles. Oh, what, what are the three muscles? Well, they're the gluteus, muteus, and other types of muscles that are that are in the butt. But um, this one, no pun intended. But this particular butt, for example, tends to not have the refined. Um, not, a, not a refined butt. It's not a refined butt. The muscles aren't refined. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They're not. They're not refined. So this person tends to be a little bit more unorganized. Um, they they lack self control. Um, they don't uh, take pride in themselves and how they look. Mm. Um, this particular person, the reason why is because they tend to invest a lot of their time um, into maybe helping others. They're more caregivers. They mm -hmm. tend to be more concerned with their job. Other things take priority over themselves. Because if they now, have what about you know what about beanbag butt is beautiful? I mean, should we just accept the kind of butt we have and be oh, happy but, with it? Or? But did I say that <laughs> big butt isn't beautiful? Uh huh. No, it is. It is. But it, but from a health perspective, as health standpoint, okay, what you have to understand is 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 the concept of a butt. You know how cam camels have a hump on their back? Mm, yeah. Okay, that's to store uh, fat to carry them. It's not even water. It's to carry fat throughout for survival in the desert. Okay? So that's really what the our function of... Our butt, our main food storage in our body system is in our butt. So that's why after Thanksgiving, when I'm a beanbag butt now, that means it, I'm storing all the absolutely. food for the winter. Absolutely, and that's why, honestly, most people gain weight in their butts during winter. It's survival time. Women and men uh, carry, carry their food storage differently. That's why it's harder for women. Women tend to, mm. to gain thighs, bigger thighs, bigger butt than men do. Why? Because we bear children. So again, it's a survival thing. It's, 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 a, it's, it's something that's been 
through our DNA, you know, since since well, the beginning. Since of you time. mentioned this thing, the difference between men and women, of course, you yes. know, I'm thinking of. <laughs> I've tried to keep it in the context of this show, you know, that's like, yeah. but. Um, you know, people have this thing that women certain shapes that are, you know what I'm saying, the, yes. like the big. Yes. I, I don't know what if that's one of your categories or not. Oh yes. But but is that okay? Well, maybe we'll, we should. We'll get. Oh yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll say that till we get to it. Absolutely. Okay. But the but the point is 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 the reason why this is necessarily not the most healthy. Not not that, not that it's sexy. First of all, I don't think a butt a butt defines if you're sexy or not. I think that what's inside of you defines if you're sexy or not. This just tells me if you are taking care of yourself. Because if you were, there's, there's exercise things, that, uh, exercise fitness programs that you can do, eating right, that could shape that butt, that you can work on those muscles and burn that fat storage that's in your muscles. And I'm assuming it's different body. for each of the different shapes? Absolutely. Or, so what would you do for beanbag butt? Well, no, no, not, not really, no, because oh. the th everybody has the three muscles. Okay. Um, so it's just, just how you, the, the main, the, 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 the best thing to do, the best butt exercise is squats. Oh, really? Okay. Squats, you know, it, to stand up and like if you're sitting on a chair, back and forth, so back the and forth. Squats, that that's definitely works out every single muscle in your butt. So that's the most ideal exercise. You that do you a lot of squats? Do. Sometimes. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm all about moderation. Oh, I don't okay, kill so myself it's... at the gym. I don't kill myself watching what I eat, you know, and I think you that's... Like you're in great shape. Well, bless so. your heart. No, you know, it's, it's, it really is, and that's a secret to any diet, and, and that's what the book covers. It's, you want to have fun with food. You want to appreciate food, but everything in moderation. I want you to eat a hamburger. I encourage you to eat french fries. But you know what? In moderation. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you what, if you don't, you, you probably will fall off the diet. You probably would have dinner. <laughs> but, uh. Well, you know, you're entitled to cheat once here and there. I mean, that's, I think that's a given. You have to do that. Um, otherwise, you're just going to fall off the wagon. You're never going to stick to a diet. And oh, that's I got fat run over by the wagon work. this time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you what's good. <laughs> now you're making me really curious less about you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got the long shirt today. You know, it's like <laughs> see that. You know, there's there's things that you can hide. You know, there's, there's different things you can try. But but you know, I wouldn't worry too much about it, and I wouldn't be too self-conscious about your butt. Like I said, if you are, there's certain things that you can do to help it. But this, to me means that the person is investing her time into something else and not or him and her because this applies to both men and women mm -hmm. um, sure. instead of themselves and I think it's important for this type of a person with a being back back to call attention back to them a little bit it, do something for themselves so that's what this person tells me and what's the next one what, what's another kind of Ah, this is yeah. not beanbag butt. This is not a beanbag butt. This is called a bubble butt. <laughs> a bubble butt, okay. A bubble butt. And a person with a bubble butt actually, you know, this is something genetic. This is DNA. This is something they're born with. Oh, so, so it's this, not exercise? No, or? no. This person, this is naturally to them. This comes naturally to them. And But this type of personality, they tend to be very friendly, very outgoing. Things come easy to them. The problem with this personality is that eventually they get older, gravity takes place, you're not going to have oh, the bubbles. The bubble's gone. The bubble right? burst. The, exactly. Mm. And their ego bursts. Mm. It pops. And that's the problem. They have it too easy. And so when it comes time to face reality, they may or may not be able to adapt to the changes that happens in their body. And so they can go into a little bit of depression. So that's what I warn people so about. So this is the model butt. This is the, the height of... Biology. No. This is, or no, it's not. It's the onion butt. The that's onion. The, oh, oh. Uh -huh. okay, and look oh. at that. That's obviously safe. Yeah, I'm curious. You're going to talk about your But that one's an interesting one, and, and there's a point I want to make about that one too. But this is a bubble butt. This is a natural butt, um, and it's just again DNA genetics, you know. And they could fit, you know. They don't have to work hard to get it. It's, so it's, 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 it's just it's genetics, you know. Baby. It's genetics. It's genetics. But but again, it's it's it, it affects it, it messes up with your mind sometimes because you can't, or you will not always have this, and if you don't always have this. People adapt to it differently, and they can go into a sort of depression that they're not perfect. They didn't have that, but they tend to be very friendly, outgoing people. We'll be right back with Jenny Lee and find out what kind of butt you have. <laughs> And we are back with Jenny Lee, the sexy nutritionist. Jenny telling you what kind of a butt you have. And I do want to mention her book is Eat Sexy, Lose Weight. Okay, so what's the next kind of butt we have here? The next butt. Ooh. Yeah, this is Lard called... butt. This is, well, you know, granny butt. Granny butt, oh. Granny butt. You know, this is a type of person that... Mm, I'm thinking teenagers. you probably shouldn't be wearing... Oh, you should, you know, well, you know what? Is if you feel sexy, my gosh, you wear oh, okay, whatever okay. you want. That's the, that's the key, I think, in life. If you feel good about it, do it. But this particular person, actually, uh, they started off with a good perky butt. Chances are they had a good butt growing up. Mm -hmm. um, but because of lack of motivation, job, maybe in a marriage, relationships, they let themselves go. Oh. These are the people that let themselves go. And so they tend to be 
they self-pity themselves. They tend to be jealous, a little bit more envious. They, they, they tend to carry a chip on their shoulders. When in reality, they, they realize they, they feel they don't have control. They've lost control of something they once had. But that's not true. If mm. they gave, like I said, if they go back to the gym, do a couple of exercises, they may not be able to reverse all the signs of aging, but they're able to at least reshape it where they can feel perhaps close to where they once were, but they rather just self-pity themselves. Now, is that cellulite? <sighs> that is cellulite. That's also stretch marks. Stretch marks. Okay, Those are gotcha, stretch okay, marks. Okay, so, and, yeah. uh, now, is this the worst kind of, is Granny, is there a worst or not? Or I would say there's way? not so, a worse not a worst, but, you know, but, okay. I think everybody's different in their own way. And and one of the things that but I, I don't want say, a Granny butt. You don't want a Granny butt. <laughs> I don't, you know, I think people wouldn't want a Granny butt. But what I'm saying is they can do something about it, yet they'd rather self-pity themselves than trying to do something. Do a lot of squats. Lots of squats. Lots of squats. Lots of cream. Stretch marks, unfortunately, you can't remove through exercises. Oh, you know, you can't. In fact, if you work too hard and too fast and you build muscle in your butt too fast, you will get stretch marks. So you don't want to oh. work on it fast either, too quickly, because that's how you get stretch marks. Stretch marks are basically when the skin is being pulled at a very fast rate, and then you develop stretch marks. Okay, stretch marks are not good. Stretch marks are not good, but you can surgically remove them if you choose to, and mm. there's creams that you can use to minimize them. But you know, it is what it is. It's what life gave you too. You might not have enough elasticity in your skin too. Mm. To be able to handle, and that's why the stretch marks form. That's a granny butt. Granny butt. Okay. That might be why our granny's butt look like. Anyway, there's a thought. You might need a therapist <laughs> I never, after that I never one. I <laughs> saw a granny's butt before, but oh, that's okay. You can put it down or keep it. Or, but, uh, <laughs> you know what? Yeah, no. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay with you. Which one is this one? Oh yes, this is what I call the under construction butt. And again, keep in mind, this applies to both men and women. Both men and women, just women, I tend to be much more pronounced and defined. Like I said, women tend to have a very different. Uh, specific, but more than men. Men kind of keep to the to the same shapes, but yeah. anyway, the, the concept so is the same. So less variety, it's more. Yes, yeah. Again, because women store fat in their butts more than men do, so the shapes are gonna. And this be is, is a woman too, right? These are all. This women. is a woman. These okay. are all well, okay. except one. Okay. Um, this is an under construction butt, and as you can see, you can see the scarring where mm -hmm. they took place and the bruises, and that's what you will see in an under, under construction butt. Even though technology and medicine has gone so far where they you can't see scarring, they, they, they there can be. As you can tell, it's not a flawless butt. You can tell it's not, it doesn't look right. To me, it doesn't look right. It, it, it looks um, altered, mixed with natural. And again, you have to keep in mind, anytime you do any type of plastic surgery, hence the oh, word so there plastic. Was, okay, because you mentioned the scar. So there, yeah. so this, what did the they under do? The under-construction butt is just that. You're under-constructing, you're going to plastic surgery oh, oh, to gotcha. build it. Put so silicone. You, what money can buy versus what the gym can Exactly, do. and okay. for that reason, these, t these, these people tend to be a little bit vain. Um, they also tend to have insecurities within themselves and they think that fixing their outer appearance is gonna make them feel better when in fact the opposite is true. So is this when you hear about when they have implants and stuff and Absolutely. all that? So it's not really, mu it's not the three muscles, it's like plastic or silicone or something? It's just silicone or? covering over the, over the muscle. So it's a fake, it's fake. Um, but they need to be working on the inside first. You need to feel good because you know, and that's why so many people become addicted for plastic, to plastic surgery. Once you start, it's never going to be good enough, and you keep going, and it becomes an addiction oh, yeah. to them. You know? I mean, I know people have done things up here and here and different, but when you start working your way down to everything, I don't you know. You know, there's so uh... much your body can take. There's so much your body can take, and really, they need to be working. These these type of individuals need to be working within, in, out, not out, in. It's not going to happen. So these are the under construction butts. What I call the under construction butts. So definitely, yeah. Okay, let's skip the surgery. Skip the surgery if you can, absolutely. You know, go to the gym. Don't get, don't, don't yeah, take the easy yeah, way out and have the surgery because it's not necessarily B the easiest or C way out. Or D or, absolutely, you, know. you have to work hard to get to play hard, okay, and to get what results. This is a call the golf ball butt. <laughs> 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 and these, okay, these, you know, there's nothing really wrong with it except, as you can tell, they tend to have a little bit more thigh area, yeah. and yeah, a little bit of cellulite. Like the golf ball has dimples, cellulite. That's uh, why it's called a golf oh. ball butt. Okay. See, they I was looking be, for the cellulite all along, so I knew there was. So that's the work. golf ball butt. You know, that's what the, the indentations are for. People with the golf ball butt tend to be a little bit more pessimistic, a little bit more conservative, a little bit shy. The reason why is because they could be at the gym every day. And yes, it can help with their cellulite, it can help tone down the thighs. However, 
cellulite and the area of the thigh, those are genetic, those are DNAs. You're predisposed to those, okay? Mm. So they could be killing themselves in the gym and yet see no results. Therefore, they become a little bit negative. Oh. Um, they might tend to give up. Um, they try hard and say, so, well, why, why, after all the hard work I'm putting into this, why can't I get the results? So there are some people that no matter how... No, no matter is that, how, yeah. Is it more common in women than men, or oh, is it absolutely. both? Oh, absolutely. You know what? It's, it's in both, but I would say more common in women, simply women, because yeah. women get it more than men do. Again, because we tend to retain that more for survival, hmm. uh, child-rearing, especially um, ages. So somebody like this who's really, really trying, um, you know, it can be a little bit of, we're never reaching that goal. So they have to be just accept who they are, accept how they were meant to be. Like I said, ex you know, do the best that you can to, to be the sexiest golf butt that you have, but understand you're not going to end up with a bubble butt or an onion butt in the end. And just be content with that and work on something else of you. Bring out your personality. Bring out something. If you like your eyes, bring that out. Work something else on you because no matter how much you try, you can't just keep beating yourself up for something that you just, it's not wired in your body to do. And maybe a slightly different bathing suit? You know what? I would recommend with people with such a butt, golf ball butt, yes, they have these really cute bikini nails that they have at the, the bottom, but they have a little skirt, like a little chilling oh, skirt yeah. that you could swim with. And they have them really sexy where they have a slit. So this, it could cover this whole area. So it thins you out. So for people like this, just cover it up. You know, learn how to disguise it. Give the illusion that you don't have the thigh. So there's, a, there's different ways that you can do, but this bathing suit is obviously not the best choice for somebody with a golf ball, but yeah. not a hole in one. She's being nice, but that's... <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> right. Oh, now we're moving on. This must be the... Okay, these two... Oh, it's not the onion. No. Oh. This is a man and a woman. Oh. This is a fitness butt, but this is what I call a steel butt. Obviously, it's hardcore. It's, 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 these are the people that are in the gym for hours on end. You know, they take it seriously. It's, you can bounce off a quarter off their butt. These people obviously are very persistent. They're very dedicated in what they're doing. This applies in their whole, what I found out from my clients, from job, their work. So it's but, a, a no body fat though, basically, No right? body fat, they watch what they eat. But you know what, the, 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 wrong, the, the thing that I have a problem with with people that are, have the steel butt is they are one track minded. Ah. So if the problem with that is that they're not willing to enjoy part of life. They're not willing to cheat on that one ice cream. And you know, life is about adapting. And if you're not able to adapt and something goes awry, you know, you, you will fall apart. You fall apart, everything, you know, everything that you know, if you have such control. And they They're can't the let go They're the people who make me feel bad that I eat too much at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't because you know what? They, don't, they, they, they want control all the time. And we all know you can't control life. So when something, you know, if they get hit a curved ball, those are the type of people that most of the time can't handle it and will end up probably taking medication to help them go through, oh, right. through things. Yeah, right. no, so this is not necessarily the most What, what percentage of people do you think are in the... Anal mode, if I may say so. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. No pun intended. That's, that's, that's awesome. Just Good came for out you. Nowhere, yeah. you know? All right, you're reading that's my that's mind. That's yeah, yeah, that's, a, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, you know what? I would say about five percent. Five percent. Because to achieve this, I'm talking about no, no fat. You're, this is this is your life. This is to achieve the steel butt. This has become your life, which means something. You're giving up something. What are you giving up? What are you sacrificing to, to achieve this? Are you sacrificing your family? Are you sacrificing your work? Are you sacrificing your home? You're giving up something, time-wise, to be able to achieve this. And that's not healthy either. That's yeah. not... Mm -hmm. that's extreme. You understand what I'm saying? Sorry, we are almost out of time, but yes. i got to see... Have we got to the onion butt? You know what? I'll skip right to the onion butt. Oh, okay. So we're... Oh, we'll have to have you come back and tell yeah. us about more butts because we yeah. just... Yeah! Do you want me to go with the onion butt or do you want to... Well, I want to hear What's about it? the... Yeah, I've got to okay, see the okay, onion okay. butt. Okay, the onion butt. That's the end. Oh, butt. now this is the, 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 the height of buttness. Well, well, it's the height of buttness according to magazines out there, models, and what society expects us to have. But you know what? Honestly, the truth is, this is unachievable. To oh. have this type of butt, you it's have, Photoshop. It's Photoshop. Dear everybody, I know it. See. it's. Photoshopped. Okay, so mm. the onion butt, the reason why it's called an onion butt is because it makes um, big men cry. Because it's so good, right? Ideally, that's what we're meant to believe. So you don't want you don't want to idealize, idealize this as the perfect butt because there is no such thing. You work with whatever you're given, 
genetics, DNA, you do the best that you can, you take care of yourself, and you just try to be the healthiest person you can be. But I was joking about, but do you think, is that really Photoshop? You know what, it is Photoshop. Any bus, any time you see a butt like this, it is Photoshop. Obviously, you have to start off with a blank canvas. So of course, the girl has to have a nice set of, a nice rump. Um, you know, she obviously has to go to the gym. Um, and DNA and GNA, and the DNA and the genes play a big role. So you have to have a combination of all of it. But to ultimately re uh, achieve this, Photoshop comes into play. Isn't that a shame that they got to take somebody who is in good shape or good looking or whatever, and then they got to Photoshop on top of it? Photoshop it, exactly. Wow. And then you have teen girls that I've worked with, and no wonder we have such a big issue with anorexia nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, because they want to achieve, they want to, that they feel that that's the ideal person, that they have to look like, they have to look like that person. And that is not true. You know you can. All you have to do is like, have a computer, Photoshop, guess what? I can alter you to look like that. I can make you have big boobs like the models have. Big Please butt, don't. Like well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate the offer, but that's okay. I mean, not you. you know. <laughs> Are you sure? I can I can shorten your butt, but you know you can look sexy. You can do that. You look sexy, okay? Not that I was looking or anything, okay? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Charity Lee. You so we'll have to come back sometime and tell us about to. sexy Absolutely. food and losing weight and all that kind Absolutely. of stuff. Absolutely, my my expertise. My we'll expertise. be right back with Catherine Black. And we are back, and joining me now is Catherine Black, an actress. Her new film is The Donner Party. Great Hi. Great to have you here Great today. Great to be here. Thank you. So this is based on historical events, The oh. Donner Party. It is, um, yeah. Um, I, I'm from Canada, so I had actually never heard of The Donner Party before. And um, and I'm not from California originally, but I had heard about it. You yeah. Know, it's part of American history. Yeah, so. it's a huge part of America. It was like the first... I think it was the first settlers to leave Illinois to travel to California during the whole, you know, 1846 gold rush, you know, but it was the, the you know, people other than, uh, front, you know, the frontiers, like big families. I think it was 80 to 90. There's no um, uh, proper count of mm. the people, but 80 to 90 people had left Illinois to, to basically just walk to California. Wow. wow. And, uh, it didn't go so well. No, they they took a shortcut, mm. and um, uh, some guy named Hastings told them this about this shortcut that would get them there quicker. And they no, got apparently he had stuck. never taken the shortcut before, though, or something, or not. I read later. later I don't even know if he. Had, anyway. I think he did in the summertime or something. Oh, but it is it is like, when you're we filmed right where it actually happened, and mm. it's mountain after mountain after mountain like even in the summertime that would be ridiculously difficult you know let alone with families and babies and horses and cattle and wagons and you know it's like even in the summertime I think it would be virtually impossible for them to to, to travel through there but that's great that you actually filmed it on location in the right real... where it happened wow, wow. yeah it was creepy so yeah. what did happen they got snowed in yeah in early snowfall in October and they, they had been traveling since April. Um, and uh, so our story is about um, a, f a few, few people, um, my family, uh, myself and my, my character, and um, my husband and father and sister, and then um, a couple other families. Like, I think there's... Um, so just, it was just like a, you know, under 10 people basically traveling um, and they decided to walk. Um, walk because, across the country. Because my father, he's from Vermont, so he knew how to build snowshoes and he knew how to handle heavy snow. And we filmed in, we actually filmed in April, not October or December or January, April, after the snow had already been melting for a while. Hmm. And I'm from Northern Canada where there, you know, snow, yeah. I grew up on a snowmobile. and. There was 12 feet of snow in April. Wow. It was crazy. <laughs> I you, 20 inches was back when I went home, but wow. No, like feet, the, wow. the um, basketball net where we were staying, there was a basketball net, came up to my calf. Wow. Crazy. And um, yeah, so, it, yeah, filming where it, like, like where it actually happened and, and seeing the mountains and, you know, the snow and not, not even being able to walk in 12 feet of snow yourself. You know, you kind of they don't even have to act that part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God, get me out of here. Yeah, so it, it really, you know, it really added it's to it. It's Donner Party, the sequel. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I actually got stranded last, this is a side detour, but I got stranded last uh, winter trying to go home for Christmas. Oh. And um, I called it Donner Party too. Was it in the airport or? No, I, I spent, um, 
18 hours in a hockey arena in northern Ontario. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So you, it was that bad? You just kind of Yeah, the roads were closed, yeah. Wow, wow. yeah. So Crazy. you can relate to being I could, stuck I could, there. yeah. <laughs> but, they, but you didn't eat anybody. Oh, no, my character's a survivor. <laughs> I mean, in real life, but okay, but yeah, no, no, but there no. was cannibalism, though, apparently. No, but I mean, they didn't feed us, you know. They wanted you to be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> real no, hungry. they fed us in the movie. They didn't feed us when I was stranded in, in the hockey oh, arena. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I, I could imagine. I thought imagine. they were taking it to the next level for realism. You're there. They're not going to feed you. They wish. <laughs> they wanted to see how yeah. long it would take for the, that cannibalism. The unions would not it. allow it, but I'm sure those producers <laughs> yeah. were thought, you know, Sag were thinking about you it. you can't eat your cast members, you know. <laughs> By the yeah. way, I should mention, I'm, some of the other people in the film are... Crispin Glover, uh, who's phenomenal. Uh, I, I, uh, I don't think I've ever worked with anybody that intense before. Mm. And I, he seems like he would be. Yeah, in the best way. Like, like he, was, he had less clothing on. Like, I mean, we were all in these big jackets. I looked like I was straight out of Russia. You know, I was like covered <laughs> in blankets and coats and stuff. And, and he was dressed kind of nice in a little, wool, you know, little wool coat and some leather shoes, and oh. never once complained. Was, was that always for, that happy. Was for his character? Yeah, for his because his character was kind of an aristocrat, oh, so oh. he he dressed nice, you know, to the bitter end. Oh. And um, and he, yeah, he he never complained while we were filming. Was always wanting to talk about it and really. I mean, he he would. Um, you had to kind of get your elbows up, you know, if you wanted if you wanted your performance, if you wanted, but it created this environment that was really creative and and inspiring. So I mean, for me, it was anyways. You know, I would I would corner him at the makeup chair. You know, when he's getting like his makeup done, I would, you know, try and hard sell him on something I wanted to do, and mm. that was it was it was a neat set to be on. In in Canada, when you film a movie. Everybody just follows the rules. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so I just found this, you know, I found this such a, a liberating, freer. yeah, and uh, creative environment. It's one, it's one of my favorite um, working experiences for sure. And you, you did a ton of research, though. I did, yeah. From the moment I was cast, I I had around two months, and I spent day and night just obsessing and reading and researching, and I tracked the genealogy, genealogy of my character. Yeah. yeah, she's from Yorkshire, my grandmother was from Yorkshire, and then I started thinking, you know, how many generations am I, and, you know, and then I thought about North Americans, what it is, I, my mother's side of the family are American, and, and it just gave me a greater understanding of just this continent, you know, in this country. Well, I was thinking, you know, you may have known her genealogy better than she did. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> <Unless> totally. She, <laughs> she was, I think she was fourth generation. In, like, so they oh, were here okay. from the beginning, you know, 1846. And on my dad's side, I'm ninth generation Canadian from Scotland. Oh, my, my mother's God. mother's from Yorkshire, which is where my character was from. Ah, ah. And um, so, yeah, but I just But she's a found, survivor. She's she, a survivor, yeah. She, and you see, you see a picture of her, and you can, you can see that she's a survivor. Mm. And just recently, there was a book written about her that came out um, called The Har Harrowing Saga of uh, the Donner Bride, or something along those lines. Um, I definitely want to read it, but because she, I, I did, this is not in the movie at all, but there's this one thing I read while I was researching. Um, Patrick Breen, he's a, one of the characters. He's not actually in our movie, but he was traveling with them or, you know, in, for real, when, and he kept a journal. And there's accounts of cannibalism in his journal. Very stark, it's a very stark very, journal, you know? It got very dark. Yeah, and, um, and so there was this one part where her my character, her real name is Sarah Graves Fosdick, um, but uh, for the purposes of the film, they changed it to Anne mm. Graves Fosdick because there was another Sarah. Oh. It's confusing. Um, and and um, I think my character is a little more distinguishable because she has a family and um, a sister and a father and a husband. She married. She forced her husband to marry her the night before they left Illinois. Oh. They weren't actually supposed to go. And like late at night, you know, the night before they left, she made him marry her and go to California. 
So did she? Did he survive too? No. <laughs> oh, he got a quick divorce. <laughs> I'm so sorry we are out of time. Oh, Catherine, no. by the time flew by. <laughs> I look forward to seeing the screening. I know you have one coming up, and then this is going to be released. What a limited release in various theaters, and then on yeah, DVD across and California, and um, it will be available on Netflix and um, DVD. Uh, I think worldwide um, at the end of January. Movies at the Donner Party. Thank you very much, Catherine Black. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank we'll see you, you next time.